I've never owned an Apple product in my life. I've used other people's Apple stuff, Macs, iPhones, iPads, but my decision to not purchase their products is because I'm pretty sure that prolonged exposure to them results in you wanting to join their cult. Apple fanatics are brutal. They're often very pretentious, believing that the product they own makes them better than others in some way, and they're very defensive of the company, as if they can do no wrong, despite the fact that they've fucked up numerous times. From the poor functionality of the Newton to the iPhone 6's bendability, I don't think that's a word, but let's just say it is, to the fact that they installed suicide prevention nets in their overseas factories to stop workers from leaping to their deaths instead of making the working conditions better so they wouldn't want to kill themselves. Apple is a company that knows how to shit the bed and clean it up before mom finds out. But you can't tell Apple fans that. They've drank so much of the Kool-Aid that there's no helping them. So, this latest story comes as no surprise to me, nor will the defense from Apple fans. Apple is being investigated for collusion. Why? Well, it's alleged that Apple has been talking to record labels, trying to convince them to pull their shit from services like Spotify, Rhapsody, and yes, even YouTube, and make their artists work exclusive to Apple, both on iTunes and their new Apple Music service, launching soon for only $9.99 per person. Apple fanboys and fangirls will likely say, What's wrong with that? It's just good business sense. It's a free country and a free market. They should be allowed to do that. Well, what's wrong with it is, it's the first step toward building a monopoly, something that there are laws against. It'd be the same as if they had went to places like Walmart and said, hey, dump all other MP3 players and just carry iPods and we'll make it worth your while. It doesn't create a fair, free market. It locks competitors out from even competing. Like showing up to the arena first, locking all the doors and saying, well, the other team's not here. I guess we win. But never mind how shitty it is for the competitors. Let's talk about how fucking stupid it is for the consumers. Say they could convince Universal, for example, to drop all their artists from YouTube and Spotify, promising more money than they'd make if they left their shit on there. So now, if you want to listen to an artist who's signed with Universal and there's a shitload of them, you'd have to pay $9.99 a month to Apple. But of course, there'll be holdouts who won't work with Apple, like those who are currently signed to Tidal. So imagine if you're a Calvin Harris fan and a Jay-Z fan. I know, it's painful, but try to imagine that. These people exist. Both these artists potentially wouldn't be available on both services. So you'd have to buy Tidal for $9.99 or $19.99 if you actually believe you can hear the difference in audio quality and then pay $9.99 for Apple. Then, all your favorite music isn't in one place, you've got to open separate apps, you can't make playlists featuring both, the consumer loses. And if they pull their shit from YouTube, well, as you may recall, Taylor Swift pulled her music from Spotify because she claimed she wasn't making enough money. I don't know how much she makes from YouTube, but I bet Big Machine gets about, let's say on the high end, $10 per 1,000 views. One penny per view. Then T-Swift gets her cut, which would be less. If she decided to say, okay, no more YouTube either, I don't make enough money. You think she'd have hit number one with bad blood a few weeks ago on the Hot 100? I highly doubt it, since that was the week her YouTube video debuted. YouTube views count on the Hot 100. Radio stations base their airplay pretty heavily on the charts, so if she wasn't on YouTube and she wasn't on the radio, who would know that she even released a quick cash-in remix with Kendrick Lamar for her idiot fans to all rush to iTunes to buy? If people have to go to a number of different places to get their music, you know what they'll end up doing? Pirating it. I mean, as if people aren't already. But do you know why Game of Thrones is the most pirated TV show? It's not because it's the best, and it's certainly not because it's on at a time when no one's home. It's because it's exclusive and expensive. You've got to subscribe to a cable company, then subscribe to HBO, and in some cases be paying for special equipment or a premium package first. And some providers just don't have HBO. People just say, fuck this, and go download it. Is that right? No, but the more walls you put up, the more people will just want to find ways around them. All of this shit is a desperate attempt for the music industry to make money in the digital age, but they're fucking it up iTunes was a good idea, a buck a track or whatever, 
instead of making people buy full albums full of shitty filler. The DRM part wasn't a good idea, but they've basically got rid of that now. Free, ad-supported streaming, that's enticing the customers who want free, legal music. Being able to watch music videos on YouTube fills the void left by MTV, who for the last 20 years mostly just shows TV programs of people in houses yelling at each other. But setting up services where artists will be exclusive and pulling music from free sites makes rich people look like assholes and will result in everyone losing. So just play fair, Apple. People are gonna buy your shit anyway because they're brainwashed idiots. And artists, smarten the fuck up. Going exclusive or getting angry about streaming services that don't pay you enough. You want your noise in as many places as possible. You want it to be inescapable. You aren't making enough? Well, if you didn't have to hire 10 producers, 15 writers, and a boatload of featured artists for every album, maybe the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow would be a little fuller by the time you reach it.